Oh, we got another Hemi in the shop. That's a 2006 Doge. I think it's a Charger, right? Looks like a Charger. Yeah, I can't tell with these if they're Challengers or Chargers, but I believe this is a Charger RT. Got the 5.7, has the Hemi. Customer states, I hit something, my skid shields are broken, and there's something leaking. So we've got it up on the rack. We're gonna take a look at it. And right off the bat, we can see it's got, uh, definitely has some skid shield damage right here. It's uh, received the zip tie repair modification. Looks like there's uh, some bolts torn out of it, some buckling on the second piece, and again, some more zip tie action going on here. A bunch of scraping has been taking place on this lower shield, so it's probably been dragging the ground and hitting things. Not looking too good. Uh, probably just gonna require some plastic replacement pieces. Might have to go to the eBay land to, uh, to find those units. But the concerning part is right about here. See, if we take a look at this, uh, this fastener here, the bolt set on, we can see that's like straight down. And we follow back in this direction, we've got the other fastener and it's at uh, something serious of an angle. Further inspection indicates that the actual subframe is bent and buckled. Take a look at that hole right there. That's supposed to be circular in nature but it's buckled in and has been smashed due to uh, an impact with uh, some type of an object here. Now, I can see that it's had some suspension re components replaced once upon a time. Those are new strut assemblies, or new-ish. Another new-ish one over here on this side. If we take a look at the lower control arms, you see you've got a front lower and a rear lower. The front lowers have been replaced. You can tell from the uh, new ball joint color or the blue on the ball joint, rather. Uh, same thing on this side over here. Let's grab a, uh, a pry bar real quick and see how these uh, rear units are also, uh, how these guys are looking. I think, and I suspect that there's some play in these rear lower control arms as well. Hey Dave, would you mind giving me a shake on this wheel right here so we can take a look at, uh, at these ball joints? Mm, go up and down, sir. Yeah, not really. Go uh, go left and right again. Okay, we've got some motion yeah, taking place at the bushing on the inside. Let's stick a... That's good, Dave. You can stop. Let's stick a pry bar in there and see how much how much play we really get out of these units. Here, will you hold that light up so I can see what we're trying to see? Yeah, a little bit of play in the bushings there. They're really tough to see because they're kind of captured inside oh yeah yeah we can see it right there look at that tear we little tear right there in the bushing see that so we need to put uh lower control arms on this unit let's go check the other side here see if i can't see yeah there's another one nasty and torn up so we've got a lot of flex in uh in the suspension on this unit Okay, yeah, so we hit something pretty hard. We've got some wear going on. Uh, it appears someone's tried to mitigate uh, maybe like a loose steering situation by changing uh, struts and some of the control arms, but the job's not quite finished yet. Ooh. What is this? Look at there. It's a biohazard. Yeah, we definitely hit something. Look, there's like bone and uh, fluids and hair. That's nasty. Okay. Moving out back. Oh, look at here. I found more of it. There's, there's more nasty. Look at that. More biohazard. Some kind of a creature has gotten stuck underneath of this dodge. Hey, oh, look here. Look at that one. Look, look, look. Dave, check this out. I found the claw. Look at that. There's a claw in there. Some kind of a creature has uh, fallen apart underneath this vehicle and has been cooking on the exhaust. Ew. Yeah, there's some more bone pieces. I wonder what this creature was, like a, a raccoon or a possum? You can see his little paw right there. Yeah, he didn't make it. I wonder if that creature is what bent the subframe. Like, I doubt it, but I mean, you never know. Wild animals are kind of stout. And we've got more, uh, more biohazard back here. It actually looks kind of fresh. See the the fluid staining around the uh, organic matter on the muffler. 
Yeah, that's not good. Yeah, anything out back? Any more pieces of uh, of crispy critter? Anything up here? Let's see. Is there crispy critters in there? Nope, nope, nothing up top. So yeah, we ran over something. He didn't do so well. Poor little guy. But how do I get that out of there? Do we pressure wash him out or do I pick it out with pliers or do we just let nature take its course and slowly over time it'll just return to the earth and uh, it'll be nobody's problem. I mean, that's pretty gross right there. Yeah, a bunch of hair and stuff in it. You nasty, you nasty Dodge. You got animal chunks all over you. Gross. Yeah, it happens. At least it wasn't a cow. Like a, like a fox or something like that. I don't, I don't know what I'm talking about. I'm just trying to figure out what kind of a, what kind of a creature this is. All we've got to go on is uh, the little paw right there. Uh, any, uh, any biologists out there that know what this thing is? I would like to know what species of creature we have discovered that has moved into this dodge. Well, I can't really determine whether the animal slash biohazard caused uh, this bent subframe right here or not, but that's a, that's a pretty nasty hit that this thing took. So unfortunately, I'm gonna have to recommend a subframe, a wheel alignment, a couple rear and lower control arms, and uh, we need to pressure wash the uh, the animal carcass uh, out of the vehicle. Uh, oh, there we go. Look, quick side note. I have also seem to have located some uh, leaking engine valve cover gaskets. If we take a look way up there. Yeah, right there. We can see a bunch of oil dripping at that cover right there. See how you got the black piece on the left? And then there's the... Uh, the aluminum cylinder head, you see that oil dripping off of it? That's valve cover gasket leak. Uh, let's check the other side here. And we're looking at something similar. Got a drip going on right there. That's a valve cover leak. Mm, okay. Hey, let's let this down and take a peek under the hood real quick. Off the locks, golf ball lever down, and lift coming down. All the way down, Doge. Oh, real quick side quest inspection. We seem to have some uh, some worn out bushings here on the ball joints. And yeah, take a look at that right there. That uh, that boot is worn out pretty bad, and it appears to uh, have exposed the ball and socket joint to uh, the atmosphere, and it's allowing dirt to get inside of that ball joint right there. Yeah, it's not looking too healthy either. Let's go check the uh, driver's side real quick while we're here. Okay, that one's not as bad. See how the boot is intact and that unit's sealed up? Yeah, that one's not as, uh, that one's not falling apart the way the, uh, the other side is. Okay, continuing to go down. Dave, will you hit the lever? Let this thing down some? We're gonna check under the hood real quick. Get one more visual on those valve covers. Thank you, sir. Ding, 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 dodge, dingling. Dingling doge, there's our hood release, popsy hood. Hello, lizard. There he goes. What are you doing in there? Trying to get run over? Goodbye, lizard. You don't want to be here. His name is Steve. He lives here now. Faded yellow. Yep, it's got a hammy. I wonder if this one has 16 spark plugs like the Blue Doge did. We're gonna find out. Pull the cover. There we go. And yep, 16 spark plugs, just like the other one. Uh, let's see, valve cover gasket leaking. Yeah, we see some saturation going on right there at the bottom of that cover. See where the little studs are sticking up? Yeah, all that is oil saturation. Okay, let's go around to this side. Again, there's some oil saturation taking place. You know, it's not a huge leak, but it is there. Hmm, 
more evidence of crispy critters. There's some droppings and some uh, some nesting material in here. Okay, not too bad. Go. Hmm. Alrighty. Well, I think we found the worst of it. Uh, this appears to uh, it's going to be a what well, appears to be a, a major job because considering the subframe is bent. So um, I'm gonna have to source some parts, uh, get with the guy that owns this Doge Daytona, and see what they would like to do about remedying uh, said situation. Um, the deal is probably gonna be I'll fix the suspension stuff and I'll remove the crispy rat critter, uh, probably free of charge. I'll just blast them out of there with some brake clean and a pressure washer and, uh, and see how that works out. So guys, uh, let me know what you think about this uh, particular Doge in the comment section uh, down below. Have you ever run over a crispy critter and had him stuck on your exhaust pipes before? Let me know again, comment section down below. While you're down there, do not forget to tap that like button. And most importantly, have yourselves a great day. See you guys later. Into Doge inspection Daytona video, into crispy critter, into oil leak, end of bent subframe and totaled front suspension, into video, end of transmission.